Ever since I met you, God. Keep singing, keep singing. Now I have it. Now I have a purpose. We believe. Singing that, keep singing it. this might be a new environment we're just gonna lift the lid off of our praise tonight we can keep singing this chorus or something similar I just feel like what we are singing is such good news we've got a purpose we've got a destiny and it's to know Jesus in his glory I can't stop smiling up here I just feel the hunger the joy in the room tonight I'm like man we've got a good life following a risen Jesus so we're going to obey Psalm 100 as wildly as we can right now. When it says, make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Hold on, hold on. I love lifting a shout because it's a commanded way of praising Jesus. But tonight's shout is a joyful shout of praise. It's, it's an I get to follow Jesus shout of praise. I get to know him in his glory with my friends in this room shout of praise. So, whether you've done this before or not, it requires every voice, man. We're going Jericho shout where every voice has got to get lifted. So if you're sitting down, stand up with me. We are going to have every voice. We are going to lift a shout of joyful praise. A shout of joyful praise. We're going to make a joyful noise to the Lord on the count of three. Are you guys ready for that? We're going to make a joyful shout, then we're going to respond really quick. On the count of three, a joyful shout. One, two, three.
Making my heart a resting place with my breath, praise my breath. Making my heart a resting place with my breath, praise my breath. Making my heart.
strong enough to say you're the only card who has all power. Yeah. You're the only card who can empty the crate. You're the only card strong enough to say you're the only card who has all power.
exalt you, King Jesus, tonight. with you Jesus we sing this straight to you tonight
just want you to do this right now. Just close your eyes and lift your hands. We exalt the resurrected King of glory. The one who holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Father, we're asking, would a revelation of the gospel of Jesus touch us afresh tonight? Oh, Jesus, we say, increase your presence. You're here with us. We're asking, would you increase your presence right now, Jesus? Oh, yes, we say wisdom and revelation. Open our eyes. Open our hearts tonight. We exalt the one who has conquered death, hell, and the grave, who is undefeated, the name above every other name. share something that's on my heart for you tonight about Jesus being our first love and we're going to hop right back into worship 
So is everyone doing good? Jesus, we're just so grateful for your presence that's in this place tonight. Father, we honor your presence that's in this place tonight. Jesus, our eyes are on you, our hearts are toward you, and our lives are bowed down at your feet. Jesus, we're asking tonight, would you pour out a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of who you are? We don't want to just have empty phrases. I don't want to heap up empty phrases. We don't want to just do Christian karaoke. We've come to meet with you, Jesus. So here we are, Jesus. We say yes to you tonight, Jesus. And, you know, I have to share a funny story. Like I said, 10 minutes, like maybe 15 minutes, and we're just going to pray for each of you. We're going to keep worshiping. You can sit down where you are if you want to find a chair. It's kind of fun to have a word at a Thursday night greenhouse because so much of what we do in greenhouse is the reflection of St. Jesus. We want to make your presence our priority. So as you're finding your seat, I was praying for this moment, praying for you guys. And it was kind of last minute. My husband was going to do it. And then we decided last minute I was going to do it. And I was a little bit like, man, Lord, I don't have much time to prepare. So I was scrambling. I'm scrambling. Oh, getting all my old notes, anything, first love. And then I was trying to watch these Bill Johnson videos and all these videos on first love to like fuel my spirit. And nothing would play. And I was like, what is going on? And then I would try to do another deal and something totally unrelated would play on my phone. But then I'm trying to listen to all these first love teachings and none of them would play. I'm literally shaking my phone and the Lord says, I'm trying to give you fresh bread for tonight. And you're trying to get someone else's bread for a different time. And so I said, Lord, forgive me. I totally was. If there is one line you have for tonight, what is it? And in my spirit, I heard as clear as crystal, if I were to ask you what your dreams are, what are your answers? Let's redefine the dream in one generation. When I ask you what your dreams are and your goals are, you have something that comes to mind right now. If you would have asked me when I was 18, what are my dreams and goals? I would have had these really big ministry answers. Like, man, I wanna see this nation saved and that's all good things. They're all really good things. A lot of what you're thinking of when I ask you, what are your dreams? You might be thinking of, you know, being sent to another nation or seeing your university saved. These are all good things. These are all godly things. But that's when I just felt the Lord begin to say, I'm putting Jesus back in the center of being a generation's dream, that my dream would be to have a wholehearted follower and lover of Jesus, to have a family burning for Jesus, to let my heart be in the center of his will. So I'm just gonna unpack two scriptures for you tonight. We're gonna look at these, what Jesus said and what Paul said. And I just felt God, wants to redefine what the dream is for a generation. Because here's the deal. All these things, when I say, what's your dream? They're gonna happen when you put Jesus in the center, right? Because when he says, not my will, but yours be done, he will lead you in his will. I'm not saying don't do the great things. He said, greater things are coming, okay? But I'm saying it's time to let Jesus be the dream of our hearts again the revelation of Jesus, the increase of the knowledge of God. Because right now what's being defined for us is that platform and influence is the dream. It's the dream. Man, I just got this huge opportunity. My dreams are coming true. What if, what if God is leaning in to this hour. And this is what I believe he's doing. He's saying, make me your dream. You were my dream. You were the dream in my heart. And there is this fire of purity that's already in you. It's, it's in you. It's why you're here. It is, I remember, it's like the last five years you've seen this turn of, I want the real thing. I want the raw thing. I don't want religion. I don't want to show up and heap up empty phrases. I want Christ and Christ crucified, him and him alone. And so I want to look at this really quick, just a few things that what does this actually look like? Jesus says, if you love me, you keep my commandments, right? 
If you love me, you keep my commandments. Love is connected. Thank you, Ian. I got up here. I was fine. And then it was like, started dancing around. I'm just drenched in sweat. We bless the Lord. But love is connected to his mission. Right? Paul says, I'd rather be with him. But if I'm here, if I'm on earth, I'm going to do this stuff. We are called to the Great Commission. The Great Commission is actually proof that Jesus is your first love. If you are burning and you are going, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. This life I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. When Jesus is our obsession, Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added to you. So I want to look at this. Matthew 16, Jesus tells his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world? but forfeits his soul. What shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come and his angels in the glory of his Father and he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, I mean, this verse is intense. You know, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This scripture is a part of this conversation between Jesus and his disciples. Jesus is teaching them about the cost of following him and the importance of prioritizing eternal life over worldly gain. This means that gaining everything the world has to offer is ultimately meaningless if it leads to the loss of one's soul or eternal salvation. What's your dream? What's your goals? Matt talked to us today about our destinies. You have a destiny. You have a purpose. You are here. But there is something about Jesus being in the center of saying, you are my one pursuit. Seek first the kingdom and everything else will be added unto you. So I want to keep going here. I want to go to Philippians 3, and then we're just going to respond and just cry out to Jesus and say yes to him and let him touch our hearts tonight. Philippians 3, not that I have already, 312, not that I've already obtained this or I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I've made it my own, but one thing I do forgetting what lies behind and straining forward towards what's ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. Let those of you who are mature think this way. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Join, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I've often told you and now tell you, even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is their destruction. Their God is their belly and they glory in their shame. With minds set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And from it, we await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call in Christ. I couldn't believe it. I'm sitting in the car and I just... It was like this fire hit and he said, I'm redefining what dreams are, what the dream is for a generation. So I'm here to tell you tonight, I want to I want to front door a few things if that's okay. And these are nothing. I am not saying I am above this. I am saying if I'm telling you this, it's because I've walked through this. But there is this thing that tries to get us to make it be about us, to make it be inward, to make it be, look at me, woe is me, or, or look at this, I finally made it. I've got the microphone in my hand. I'm on the platform. 
platform. But let me tell you something. You might reach your wildest dreams and you will still be unsatisfied if God is not consuming you. You could have the craziest breakthrough. You could have someone give you a million dollars, right? And you think in your mind, if I just had this, if I just had this, if I just had this, tonight I'm saying let's throw away the bait. If I just had what? If I just have Jesus, I have everything. (laughs) Seasons will come, seasons will go. Favor will come, favor will go. Blessing will come, trial will come. But one thing remains steady, and it's the love of Christ. One thing remains constant, and it's the love of Jesus. You can't put Jesus as your first love if you do not know how wildly and recklessly he loves you. We love because God first loved us. There is a demonstration of love that was the grandest, greatest demonstration in all of human history. And it was Jesus Christ on a cross bearing the weight of sin. The wages of my sin was death. But this bridegroom king steps onto earth, takes the sin, brings his bride back to eternity with her groom. And we are living in the greatest love story of all time, in between the first and second coming of Jesus. I'm asking you to get caught up in scripture tonight. I'm asking you to get caught up in the treasure in the field that we would sell anything to grab a hold of. course we know Paul is emphasizing that he's left behind his old way his old way of life and worldly pursuits in order to pursue a relationship with Christ and be found in him and that's our declaration tonight we will pursue you Jesus as you pursue us our lives will be a response and what I love is I remember when I first encountered the love of Jesus on the cross I was 18 years old I had gone to do my discipleship training school in YWAM and I had only believed in Jesus to not go to hell that was my my view of God well yeah I'll believe in you I don't want to spend eternity in hell I had no revelation that my salvation was from a God who loved endlessly and I just remember in this moment being like what is this I've been around Christians my whole life and no one told me I'm like, this is crazy. This is, what is this? And I remember me and my friend who were doing DTS together, we just started telling everyone about Jesus. Everyone was like, oh, you're such an evangelist. And I remember thinking, I'm not. I'm in love. Like, I cannot believe this. This is the greatest injustice is that someone would die not having an opportunity to surrender their lives to Christ. Far be it for me to be ashamed of the very thing that rescued me and anchored my soul into eternity. I'm like, what? Why am I saying this? First love fire looks like something. It's not just an emotion or a feeling. It's not just a, I'm hopping to greenhouse, then I'm going to hop to upper room, then I'm going to hop to IHOP because Jesus is my first love. So I'm just going to stay in the prayer room. That's not bad if God's telling you to do that. You do you. But what I am saying is first love fire is not merely an emotion or a way you feel. First love fire is I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And it is the cry of Father, not my will, but yours be done because I'm in love. First love is more than a feeling. It's an action that overflows. So it says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Well, the very thing Jesus leaves us with He's risen from the grave. He's walking with his disciples. And we know all through the book of John where he's talking about this. If you love me, you keep my commandments. And we know these commandments. Love the Lord your God. It's full of commandments. But he's walking with his disciples about to ascend to the right hand of the Father. And he, boom, 
go into all the earth and preach the gospel. Baptize in my name, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Cast out demons, raise the dead. Can you imagine the love in Jesus' voice looking at them saying, I know what this relationship means to you. And now I'm saying, go. Now I'm saying, be my hands and feet. First love fire always turns in to the fire of the Great Commission burning inside of you. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and God was the Word, and the Word put on flesh and dwelt among us. And now the Holy Spirit is living inside of us. The Word of God is living inside of us. There is this fresh cry of surrender of saying, first love is not just something I can say, but it's the posture of the surrendered heart. Jesus being my first love fire, you know, I, we hear this all the time. There's the passage in Revelation 2, for you've done these things, you've turned from the things you loved at first. A lot of messages you hear, it's like, come back to your first love. And I agree with that, it's scripture, but I would propose tonight that you are burning for your first love or you wouldn't be sitting in this room tonight. You wouldn't be making space to come encounter him. You wouldn't be seeking him. And so I'm speaking to a room of first love burning ones saying let's define the dream in this generation that Jesus is our dream and what is our goal I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call in Christ let's do it again in so good our calling is him I remember a few years ago I started looking to the New Testament about calling, you know? Because I'll tell you one thing, knowing our calling is wrapped up in Jesus will be one of the most freeing things you can ever walk in. Because I had a moment, and I promise I'll wrap up in a few minutes here, where we had had an album come out in 2016 called Every Nation. Shout out, anyone heard Every Nation? Okay, handful, here we go. And it was this beautiful moment of songs we had written in the prayer room that, are, that were filled with go, the message of go. And it was like the world got to look into our garage here or a little prayer room, you know. And th this album came out and these songs went around the world and it was beautiful. And we did another album and I was like, Lord, this is it. This is the dream. Woo, my dream's coming true. Yes. And then one night I had this dream where the Lord said, I'm calling you into foster care and to foster children. And I was like, woo, wrong girl. That will mean I can't travel. That will mean I can't get on a plane anymore. That means I'm going to have to get court approval anytime I want to go anywhere. I was like, I'll pray for that. I'll give to that. But I don't know that I'm called to that. Right? I don't. Lord, this is my calling. It's here. Everything I thought, everything I dreamed of, it's here. The nations, to the nations. I, we were in the nations. It was like I was living the dream. And then God speaks. And I said, are you sure? Are you sure? And I begin to have encounter after encounter that we were meant to do this. And I remember I had this moment where I just fell on the floor in our apartment. Chase and I were two years married. And I just said, oh Lord, my highest prize is your voice. And it was in a moment I saw, I thought this was my dream, but if that's my dream, it'll destroy me. My dream is your word that's a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. My dream is that I can stay in a place of always hearing your voice and being filled with your presence and knowing the manifestation of your voice. My dream is that like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane who says, not my will, but yours be done. My dream is that you would keep that song in my heart every day, every hour. That's my dream. And it was in a moment I ripped off this idol of ministry and what I thought my dream was and I went what does a man gain if he forfeits his soul what and I said Lord obedience 
from scripture with Abraham and Isaac, the first time worship is mentioned, Abraham says, wait here while I go worship. You always pay attention to the first time something's mentioned in scripture. It's mentioned in the context of wholehearted trust, obedience, and surrender to what? The voice of God. The voice of Jesus. I knew in that moment, I'm not surrendered like that surrendered that I'd hear you in such a way and God disrupted our lives and I knew this is it we've got to do this of course you have and there's no regrets there really is no cost you think it's a cost in your flesh for 10 seconds Lord why would you take this from me if you feel that surrender surrender to his voice surrender to his will surrender to his lordship this is the greatest love song your generation my generation can sing is jesus not my will but yours be done and you know what we're always going glory to glory i'm not up here saying oh i've reached it hallelujah no there are layers because he hears the cries of our heart where he continues to pull back maybe where i started building my own agenda again or where i started thinking that that influence and platform is more valuable than obedience. First love fire is rooted in surrender and obedience. So I just wanna say a few things tonight. It's crucial that Jesus is our first love because he deserves our utmost devotion and allegiance. Here are a few reasons why, and then the band, you can come back up right now. Keeping his commandments, number one, Jesus himself emphasized the importance of loving God above else. If you love me, you keep my commandments. Number two, priority. Placing Jesus as our first love ensures that our priorities are aligned with God's will. We prioritize our relationship with him, seeking his kingdom and righteousness. Everything else falls into the right perspective. He is our deepest longing for love. He is our purpose, our significance, and we can only truly be satisfied through a relationship with Jesus. So my invitation to you tonight is those things you might be waiting for, those promises God has said. I'm saying his promises are yes and amen, but your heart postured in wholehearted love, surrender, and obedience will be the fullness and your anchor in Jesus keeping Jesus your first love, the flame of first love. That spirit of burning comes and we see his worth and we go, it's no cost at all. I give you everything. You're worth it. But even deeper, it's because we trust him and his lordship. Making Jesus our first love acknowledges his rightful place in our lives. It aligns our priorities, fulfills our deepest longings, strengthens our relationships, and helps us maintain the eternal perspective, the hope for which we're living for, which is Christ Jesus. I just invite you to stand up tonight. Holy Spirit, we just honor your presence that's in this room tonight. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the cross. We thank you. Tonight we're saying let's redefine the dream. Let's redefine the dream. Let's redefine the dream. Lord, we thank you that our destiny is wrapped up in your will. The promises you've given up are wrapped up in your voice. And tonight we're just saying we come with fresh surrender. Fresh surrender because we see you. Fresh surrender because we love you, but fresh surrender because we see your great love for us. Lord, I ask right now for people in this room who've never encountered the love of God, that your love would begin to wash over this room in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask right now you would begin just to fall on people with a revelation of your love. Tonight, Jesus. We say yes to you. We say yes to you. Let the cry of our heart be not my will, but yours be done. Holy Spirit, would you begin to burn in hearts all across this room? Thank you.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We say, Jesus, you are our first love. You are, just begin to tell him, say, you are my first love. You are my dream. You are my goal. You are my hope, Lord. Just begin to pour your love out on Jesus. Begin to lift your voice. Oh, Jesus, we say we love you. Oh, we throw our lives at your feet tonight and say not our will, but yours be done because we're in love, Jesus, because we sing you. We've seen the one. We've seen the man with fire in his eyes, and we're asking would you increase the revelation tonight and the simplicity of devotion. Would you pour out the simplicity of devotion tonight, keeping the flame of love burning Burning in our hearts, Jesus. You are our first love, Jesus. Pour out just simple devotion on us. Teach us how to walk in simplicity, the simplicity of devotion. The simplicity of devotion, like Mary, the mother of Jesus. The angel comes and her response is, I'm a bondservant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. We say yes tonight, Jesus, to the simplicity of devotion. I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. There is none like you. There's nobody like you, Lord. No one else can touch my heart like you do. Oh, we love you, Jesus. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. Jesus. There is none. Like you. We say yes to you, Jesus. And no one else can touch my heart like you do. And I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like We're going to keep singing this, but... You know, sometimes strongholds and different things can keep us from receiving the great revelation of God's love. And I feel like one thing God wants to bring freedom to tonight is shame. You know, it's like Paul says, hey, I'm leaving this all behind. I know what the blood has done. Look at what the blood has done. And tonight I'm saying to you, if you're feeling I've done too much to really know the love of God, or I'll never know deep intimacy with the Lord like this. Lindy, you don't know my past. The Lord's saying tonight, no, my daughter, my son, I have taken your shame. And as far as the east is from the west, so I have removed your transgressions from you. I'm telling you, there's some of you, you have dealt with sin issues and you've repented, but you're carrying shame. And tonight the Lord is saying, leave the shame at the foot of the cross where it belongs. And so I just want you to do this with me and this in faith for any way. I just feel we got to get this thing out of the room. It might just be one person, but God cares. He cares that you would feel shame when he took it on the cross. So can we just get a little, a little wild in here tonight in prayer? Is that okay? Yeah. All right, so do this with me. Say, Jesus, Jesus I, repent I repent of shame. Of shame. Jesus, Jesus, take my shame. Take my shame. I, receive I receive the forgiveness.
Jesus gave his everything. So we're saying tonight, we're leaving shame. We're walking away from feeling like we can't run to Jesus. Why? His arms are open wide. But the second thing I heard that God wants to do tonight, I heard him say, give me your plan B. And here's what that means. Lord, I'm going to trust you, but if it doesn't work out, I'll go do this. I've got this. The Lord's saying, give it all. Give me everything. Give me everything. So can we do this? I'm not going to lead you in prayer. I want you to put your own prayer on your lips. But for 30 seconds, can you just say, Jesus, I give you my plan B. You're it. You're everything. In Jesus' name, just begin to lift your voice. Jesus, I give you my plan B. All unbelief that says you are not who you say you are. Jesus, we say you're everything. You're it, God. You're it. You are the vision. You are the prize. In Jesus' name. Jesus. We let go of second thoughts. We let go of unbelief tonight. We let go of unbelief that you're not a good father. We let go of the unbelief that you won't take care of us. Jesus, you are the perfect father. Oh, and how you care for us. Jesus, we give a fresh surrender tonight in Jesus' name. A fresh surrender at your feet tonight in Jesus' name.
more thing. If you're here tonight, I know some of you are encountering the Lord, but you're saying, I want to be baptized in a fresh fire. What do I mean by that? It's a fire that makes us hunger for God above else, where we understand that the Holy Spirit is living inside of us. If that's you, just lift your hand and a staff is going to come pray for you. Okay, staff, can you just begin to pray for people? Lord, we thank you for the hunger in this room tonight. And we ask Jesus, we ask for every hungry heart that your fire would begin to fall on sacrifice, that your fire would begin to fall on the simple yes. Jesus, we ask you to just increase hunger and fire tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you're calling us deeper into your presence, deeper, deeper, deeper. Mark us with first love fire tonight, Jesus. Mark us with first love fire tonight, Jesus. Lord, we're asking, would you just begin to increase all across this room, encounters with Jesus. Mark us with hunger tonight, Jesus. Oh, Father, mark us tonight. Increase. Oh, Lord, would you fill, fill the desires, fill the desires tonight, Jesus. Fill every desire.
seated on the throne. There's no one like the Lord. And elders, creatures bow, giving praise to Him and Him alone. There's no one like the Lord. Just begin to exalt the King. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain and seated on the throne. There's no one like the Lord. And elders, preachers bow, giving praise to Him and Him alone. There's no one like, oh, we sing a word.
coming back to the heart of worship Where it's all about you Where it's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made it Cause it's all about you Yes, it's all about you. I'm calling back I'm coming back to the heart of worship Where it's all about you Yes, it's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for things I made And it's all about you Yes, it's all about you, Jesus I'm coming back to the heart of worship Where it's all about you Yes, it's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it When it's all about you And it's all about you us and guides us for your word that is our anchor for your voice that is the word it is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path Lord we thank you for all the work you did tonight and Jesus we just say would you seal it upon our hearts what's of you let it take root and go deep what's not of you let it wash away Father we thank you for meeting us tonight I know we can go for 10 hours and I want to more than anything. I do. <laughs> Trust me. Maybe we could just sing that first love chorus just a few times. Go still my first love. Your
will continue to press in and worship and encounter the presence of Jesus. I want more than anything to linger. And so as part of your intercession, when you walk out, you can be interceding for a building for circuit riders so we can linger longer hours. Amen. Amen. If you're in this school, um, the shuttles will begin right after this. I am so lost right now. If I forget these, I think I've got it though. The shuttles will begin directly after this. Tomorrow, class starts at 9 a.m. It's unfortunately not open to the public. For those of you that are local, maybe you could still sign up for the school. I don't know. But the school will be meeting at 9 a.m. Shuttles start at 8.30. <laughs> Look at that. Shuttles will start at 8.30 from Vanguard. Guys, I'm pretty sure we're starting tomorrow morning with worship again, right? Like, we're going in. If we weren't, we are now. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, like, just, we're so grateful you guys are here. Those of you that faithfully come on Thursday nights, it is such an honor to go deep with you every Thursday. There's so many youth groups and people from Orange County that consistently come on Thursday nights. And we want to say thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming and pressing in. For those of you, yeah, let's give it up for the Orange County locals. Um, so our gatherings that are open to the public are Greenhouse and our Monday nights. So we will see you, the school will see you tomorrow morning. And for everyone else, we'll see you Monday night in here at 6 p.m. And then, of course, every Thursday night for Greenhouse. So we love you guys. Jesus, we thank you for how you met us tonight. We bless you. We honor you. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. I'm going to let Ian uh, make the last announcement. That was awesome. <laughs> All right, I hate to do this. I get to give you the bad news. We have to get out of the building pretty quickly. That's my job. So what we can